Okay, I am David with uh, BransonOffGrid.com and my uh, website will take you to my YouTube channel of the same name. So today, uh, just trying to do a little intro, tell people uh, basically the concept of going off grid, making you realize it's just not as hard and difficult as people think it is. Uh, the big thing is the technology that's available in batteries today. What you're looking at here is an Aquion Energy saltwater battery that holds 30 kilowatt hours. That's how much it stores. Now, <clears throat> the basics uh, of the system is you have solar panels on your roof. We have two Magnum Energy. These are uh, the off-grid style inverters and they're 220 volt. So uh, you have solar power comes in from your solar panels. We have seven kilowatts on the roof. They go through these Flexmax uh, charge controllers. These are DC. They convert that power from the solar panels and run it over here to the battery and charge the battery up. This is a 48 volt system. Your battery is basically just two wires right here. Goes back into your inverters. The inverters uh, turn that uh, DC voltage and amperage back into AC voltage and amperage. So uh, basically these are 4400 watt inverters with a master slave uh, type system. So they can average, easily average about uh, 60 amps continuous, a little bit more, but uh, uh, you want to generally rate things a little bit more than what you actually need. So the battery itself uh, typically doesn't like to see more than about 120 amps coming in or 120 amps going out, and, and that's the maximum. If you can run it a lot less, that's what it likes. So to make it work for a home, uh, this uh, home here, generally takes about 25 kilowatt hours a day, sometimes 30. So during the summer, it can run uh, strictly off the solar, but during the winter, there's just not enough power coming in. Uh, this is a, a generator coming through here. So they have strictly a manual selection if they want to turn the generator on. There's a lot of choices in programming how things can be set up. This is a pretty basic system. You have a router that makes this master slave work and then you can program it and you can look on here for error codes and things like that. It's uh, not that difficult to uh, operate. Uh, it just doesn't have uh, external electronics connected to it. If you want a system like that, that's great. Uh, adds a cost to it and some complication learning how to uh, use it necessarily. But the other thing uh, to think about, most people want something that's going to be reliable. Uh, least amount of things to go wrong uh, if they lose their power and that's the whole concept of being off-grid. Now this particular system is a hybrid so we'll get into the DC uh, utilization, uh, DC lighting, other things that run off DC, freezers for example, and then the hybrid operation we'll do that on another video but there's a lot of ways to set up an off-grid system and this is a typical three bedroom house, 2,000 square foot plus a garage and it's running that whole system very easily with only seven kilowatt hours of panels. Uh, the thing is during the winter, uh, that's not near enough power coming in uh, when you have all this overcast days and so forth. So this actually has a hybrid system that's a grid available. So there's no connection like a grid tie there's no connection between the solar and the grid. However, uh, it has a transfer switch set up which can be switched completely on the grid or completely on solar, one way or the other, and it's manually operated here again. So there's no uh, electronics uh, to get involved with that, but at least it gives them the uh, ability to basically keep everything going, their freezers, everything going on the solar regardless, but still use the grid if they uh, feel the need to. And during the winter, they generally do. However, uh, adding more batteries will probably be the next option. Uh, basically, uh, getting the system up and running. The Aquion is kind of a new technology. There are others like Red Flow, uh, Flow Batteries. There's a number of different Flow Batteries available. There's uh, Iron Edison that has technology available for batteries. It looks looking pretty good. They have a couple different batteries. Basically, they redid the old Edison battery from 100 years or so ago, <clears throat> proved it. And they also have a lithium ion version of that as well. And then we know uh, about Tesla and all these other types of systems, but 
uh, basically, I uh, also look at uh, how sustainable a technology is, how uh, clean it is for the environment. In other words, uh, how clean is it to dig uh, lithium out of the ground? This is a saltwater technology here. So it's hard to get to, you could literally eat it almost. Uh, basically, saltwater, manganese, and carbon. That's all that's in this battery. Obviously, you have some plastic in it, but basically, it's uh, cradle to grave certified. It's very good technology. I don't just look at uh, what things uh, cost. If you just look at the cost, you still uh, have to figure in the cost of the environmental cost of getting that technology uh, put together and shipped to you and what it might cost later on when it's recycled and that kind of thing. So this is a, a great uh, idea as far as uh, battery technology and it's, it's fairly new but it's in operation. It's uh, Basically this is the module so it's uh, not necessarily something everybody would use for residential systems, but now it is being sold. All of your solar companies have the ability to buy this. So I just want to do a little intro, let you know that uh, if you're going to get off grid, uh, the best thing to do is talk to somebody that actually does it on, for a living and uh, can show you an actual system. Most uh, solar companies that do residential are, are probably still doing uh, grid tie. Uh, I don't know what their, uh, maybe 1% or 2% of their business might actually be off-grid systems. And most of them are still doing lead acid, but we have a lot better technology available. So don't get caught up in this lead acid technology when we actually have something much better available today. So that's what my channel is going to be about. Uh, can't necessarily go into system design uh, specifics uh, for other people's systems, but what I can do is I can go on the grid I've already done a couple of videos where I go to a website so I can show what's already in the public domain, take you to the website, show you what their technology is and what it does. So I've already got a video on Aquion, for example, and I'll do other videos uh, like that, show you th these different technologies so you can go up and, and when you do uh, get someone to help you, at least you'll be uh, pretty knowledgeable of the systems. Generally, you can go up to people's websites, uh, they have a document section, you can pull down maybe an install menu, uh, brochures, white papers, things like that, you can read up on the technology, so that's the best thing. I'll try to uh, hit on a lot of those technologies, so to give you some ideas of websites to go to to learn more, but it's just not as difficult as it sounds these days. Uh, maybe we think that, well, it's a little too expensive necessarily, but that's because we're looking at it from a viewpoint of how much does it cost to do my house and that's not the way that we should be looking at it. If you think about it now, your power is being generated uh, many uh, miles away and it's being distributed to many people at one time and that's the way we should be thinking about off-grid technology, doing a microgrid where all, uh, individual communities are tied together, making their own power, sharing their solar power if they uh, have that available sharing uh, whatever they can, if it's wind or solar or hydro or whatever. And they sh if you share the technology on a community basis, then the total cost of that is much, much less than just trying to do your own thing. Unfortunately, uh, this works very well in third world countries. Uh, for whatever reason, uh, they're embracing off-grid technology where Americans uh, just haven't uh, got there yet. But we will because the technology, what you don't understand, the technology itself the fact that it's being installed worldwide is going to drive the cost of the technology down. So at some point, people are going to make the decision to install their own solar panels, make their own power. It's a lot cheaper to make power at the point of consumption and not have to ship it uh, miles and miles across the country to get it to where it's actually being used. It makes a lot more sense to do it on a community basis, generate a community, utilize it at the community basis, and then it's a lot cheaper to maintain, a lot cheaper to install. That's where everything's going. It'll, it'll be there eventually anyway, so uh, I'm just showing people we can embrace it now. We already have the technology. It's reasonably priced. It's only going to get cheaper. So that's what my channel is going to focus on. I'm, if you'll subscribe and uh, send that link out to other people, I really appreciate it.